truly what a beautiful name it is, in the name of Jesus. May we truly adore him this Christmas season. I do want to welcome all those joining us online. I'm Pastor Zach, uh, showing our lead pastors here. We love this church, uh, love the people that are here. The church is the people. Is it the building? Nope. It's the people inside it. That is the church. Uh, that's what Jesus gave his life for. So we're thankful that we get to be a part of all of the people in this room and part of your lives. It really is a joy. I do want to clarify a couple of things. Next week, Christmas Eve, we still have morning services, so 9 and 10.45 a.m. And then in the evening at 6.30, we'll come back together as a family for carols, communion, and candlelight. And so it really is a family service. We invite you back for that. It's a great time together uh, just as a church family to celebrate Christmas. So I encourage you to be back here tomorrow, uh, next Sunday for in the morning as we uh, continue to look at uh, Christmas at Connection Point and in the evening with carols, communion, and candlelight. I also want to encourage you in your programs, there was an emphasis on a praying life that we're going to start the new year in prayer. Um, one of the best books on prayer I've ever read is Paul Miller, A Praying Life. So that's where we're getting the title from. And so we encourage you to pick up a copy. You can look for one online. We have some available at the Main Street Theater. I'm going to pass this one on to Shelley. Um, but I encourage you, grab a copy of the book. We're going to go through that in January. Just encourage you to read through a chapter a day as a part of our emphasis in prayer. We want to start the year in prayer. And that book helps lead us to do that. So I encourage you to uh, be in a, the context of prayer as we head into the new year. Well, this morning, I want to look at a bit of the generous nature of God and the sending of his son. Before Shelley and I came here as lead pastors, we were overseas. Before we were overseas, we were in the Chicago area. And we moved up to the Chicago area to uh, be able to do some teaching. So I was a high school math teacher. Shelley was a kindergarten teacher. And we also worked with my parents who were leading a church in the Chicago area called the Stone Church. Uh, the Stone Church has rich history for the Assemblies of God. It was there in 1914 that a group of people came together, about 300 people, and they made this declaration that we commit ourselves and this movement to the greatest evangelism the world has ever known. Pretty bold statement. But what's really neat to hear is 300 people, 100 years later, is 67 million around the world. So they committed themselves to it, and God blessed that endeavor. So it's really cool. So that was a church we were a part of. And so then as we made an effort to go overseas and said, we're going to Sudan, the church said, well, we really want to get behind you and send you. That's a part of the DNA of this church. And so they committed to supporting us $1,000 a month while we were in Sudan. That's really, really generous. I mean, it was incredible. And we really didn't know how to respond to that kind of generosity. You know, I don't know about you, but maybe you've had that kind of generosity, or at least in some measure, displayed in your life. Maybe somebody gave you a gift you really didn't know what to say to you. Uh, maybe it was not just a, necessarily a gift of financial, but, you know, people give of their time. That's a huge resource. And maybe you haven't been real sure on how to respond to that. But yet, as we look at Scripture and as we celebrate this Christmas season, God gave the greatest gift of them all 2,000 years ago. God sent his son, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. And so then the question is, what I wanted to examine in this Christmas message is, how do we respond to the coming of Jesus? How do we respond to that? Because as you look at scripture, there are different ways that people respond. Some respond with rejoicing, some respond in fear, some respond with hostility. But how should we respond to Jesus? So that's what I want to look at today. So if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. Uh, if you're new to the church, I encourage you, have a Bible. We want you to have a Bible. You have some underneath the seat in front of you. Uh, so if you don't have a Bible at home, feel free to take that one as a gift from the church. We want everyone to have a Bible. Um, I'm going to invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word today as well. We're going to be in Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 2, if you head to the middle, head right, you'll find it. Matthew chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. 
And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly and with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So the very words of God, you may be seated this morning. It's an interesting passage, and from it we find several responses to the fact that Jesus came. And the first is this, that we should respond to the coming of Jesus with a desire to see him. We should respond to the coming of Jesus with a desire to see him. You know, we look at this narrative of the wise men from the east who come to see Jesus. They see this star, they know what it means, and so they travel to see him. And so the first question we could ask is, where did these wise men come from? And we have some clues as it's contained in scripture. The first is an understanding of the word magi, that the word magi referred to a people in the east that was Babylonia and Parthia. That's where we were coming from in the east. But we also have clues based on the gifts that they gave, that they gave gold, which we know was mined in Arabia. We have biblical scriptures that point us that direction. But even more specifically, the gifts of frankincense and myrrh, they were mined from trees in southern Arabia. So we know that in the end, these gifts came from Arabia and even southern Arabia. But not only that, Justin Martyr, who was a second century Middle Eastern Christian, when he wrote about the Magi, the wise men from the east, he talked about them as Arabs from Arabia. So indicators would point to these wise men from the east were Arabs from Arabia. So they traveled this long distance. So when you look on a map, that's about a thousand miles from southern Arabia to Jerusalem. And you've got to think about the way that they were traveling, likely by camel. Um, I don't know about you. Do we have anybody that travels by camel regularly? No, it doesn't really work here, right? We travel by Ford and Chevy. Um, that's, that's a long trek to travel on camel. It's about a 40-day journey by camel, 40 days on camels. Now, I've traveled on camel. I've got some pictures to show you. Uh, that was the camel I was riding. I was in Jordan. That was the group I was with. Uh, I can tell you it's fun for about 15 minutes, and then you're ready to get off that animal. So I can't imagine 40 days traveling through the desert by way of camel. But that was the response of the wise men. They wanted to see Jesus. So they traveled 40 days by camel, going through the desert, so that they can see the king of kings. And when they show up, they give him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They give Jesus their best. So where do you find yourselves this morning? Do you have a desire to see Jesus? Do you give him your best or is Jesus just getting the leftovers of your life? Do you give Jesus the best part of your day? Do you give Jesus time in the car? Do you give Jesus time around the dinner table? Is he a part of your family conversations? Are you willing to turn off that TV at night so you can have time with Jesus in the morning? What is your response to the coming of Jesus? Are you giving him your best? Do you have a desire to see him? You know, one of my favorite Christmas songs, when we were with our group in Israel in June, uh, we go and visit Bethlehem, and we visit the cave that they say that he was born in. Um, we know it was somewhere in that vicinity, but it's always neat to pause and to think about the fact that even if this isn't the cave, we know he was born in this general area. And so we just pause and we sing, O oh, come, let us adore him. That should be our response to Jesus. May we adore him this Christmas season. So I'm just going to invite you. Let's, let's sing the first stanza of that song this morning. May we truly adore the fact that Jesus came, that God sent his son to us. Can we sing that today? May we truly take time to adore Jesus this Christmas season. Amidst gift giving and decorating and Christmas partying, may we truly adore the one that we're celebrating. This is why Mark's favorite season is Christmas. Because we're adoring Jesus. That really is the heart behind it. The music team's a little bit late to the game to join us for that song, right? But that's okay, they really didn't come for that song. They came for point number two. Because how did the wise men rejoice to the coming, or how did they respond to the coming of Jesus? They rejoiced. It says in that verse that they followed the star from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, and it came to rest over the place where Jesus was born with exceeding joy. They were excited at the fact that Jesus was here. The Savior has come. 
And so I want to invite you to stand, and we're just going to do that this morning, that we're going to respond by rejoicing for the fact that Jesus came, that we can sing joy to the world, our Savior has come. We should respond to the coming of Jesus with rejoicing. So we interrupt this Sunday morning message so we can rejoice. Can we do that? So let's rejoice today. Jesus has come. We should respond to the coming of Jesus with rejoicing. Amen? Amen. I invite you to be seated as I talk through the last point this morning on how do we respond to the coming of Jesus. We respond to the coming of Jesus with a heart to give things up. We respond to the coming of Jesus with a heart to give things up. When you look at these wise men, these magi from the east, these Arabs from Arabia, when they come with a desire to see Jesus, They rejoice at the fact that he has come, but they also come bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I talked last week on a season of giving, and I like to be clear that in the end, it's not that God needs anything from us. God doesn't need your offerings. It's us who needs to give to help shape the direction of our hearts. I shared this verse last week, and it it bears worth repeating this morning. Matthew uh, 6.21, it says that wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. 
So when we give, we give direction to where our hearts should go. And that's what these magi were doing, that they gave these gifts because their heart was inclined toward the King of Kings, to the coming of the Messiah. And what kind of gifts did they give? They gave gifts of Matthew 2.11. Opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they gave these gifts. This was their treasure. And they gave these gifts to the one who was the ultimate treasure. So what gifts did they give? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when they saw the King of Kings, when they saw Jesus, he now became their treasure. And that's what it is for us when we give, to say, God, in the end, more than I want anything else this world has to offer, I want you. In fact, I want more of you. It's kind of that principle of New Testament fasting, that we give up food to say, more than I want food, I want more of you, Jesus. And so it's the same thing as it comes to giving gifts, to say, God, you own it all anyway. I know I'm simply a steward of it, but I give these gifts that I might even enjoy for the sake of wanting more of you. So as we adore Jesus, as we respond to Jesus... We do that by giving up of things. You know, when we look at the responses of three different kinds, of how do you respond to Jesus? You respond with a desire to see Jesus. You respond with rejoicing. And you respond with a heart to give things up. But when you look at the New Testament, when you look at this passage this morning, you find that not everybody responded in the same way. In fact, there was two other kinds of responses that we saw this morning. I'm going to take a look at Matthew 2, 3. We already read this, but here was Herod's response. It says, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. So the wise men come and tell Herod, Jesus has come, the Messiah has come. And what was Herod's response? He was troubled. In fact, when you look at the response of the scribes and Pharisees, it seems that they did nothing at all. They didn't try to follow the wise men to see where the Messiah was going to be born. Isn't that interesting? They've been waiting for the Messiah to come. The wise men say, we're longing to go see him. We're going to go search him out in Bethlehem. But nobody follows the wise men. All of Jerusalem stays right where they're at. So the other response that you can have to the coming of Jesus is you do nothing. And we see that in scripture. But you can actually take it a step further that you can become hostile. Here's what Herod does. When the wise men depart from Bethlehem and they don't go back and tell Herod where they found him, he becomes enraged. And here's what he says he does. Matthew 2, 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old are under. So some respond to the coming of Jesus with hostility because those that don't have a heart to worship Jesus, they become indifferent or they become hostile. So how have you responded to Jesus? How will you respond to him this Christmas season? Will you respond with rejoicing? Will you truly have a heart to adore him? I encourage you to respond in that way and not in a way of indifference or hostility. I'm going to invite you to stand as we close in song this morning. And as you're standing, I do want to ask that question. That maybe you're here today. And up to this point, your response to Jesus has been one of indifference or hostility. That you really haven't had anything to do with Jesus. Not that you have any issues with the fact that Jesus came. But you've just never said yes to him. You've never said, Jesus, I have a heart to pursue you, to desire you. Or maybe you're here, and up to this point, you've, you've been hostile. You've been antagonistic to say, I really want nothing to do with Jesus, but maybe God's been working on your heart, and you're here today and say, I, I want to respond differently. I have a desire to really seek Jesus this morning, to find him as my treasure. And so if that's you today, before you leave from this place, I want to invite you to say yes to Jesus. So with every head bowed in this room this morning, if you would say, I really haven't responded to Jesus, I've been indifferent, maybe even have been hostile sometimes, but you'd say, but I have a heart to change today. I want to see Jesus. I want to rejoice at his coming. If that's you today, just simply raise your hand and we'll pray with you before you leave this place. Best gift you can receive this Christmas season is a relationship with Jesus, the Son of God, to be reconnected with your creator. Anybody here today that'd say, that's me. I desire to see Jesus. I want to know him as my savior. God, we just pray that you would continue to shape and mold our hearts. May we have a heart to truly just adore you. May we pause and sit still in this Christmas season and, and in, enjoy the fact that, God, you gave your son and you gave him humbly in a manger. And so, God, we just rejoice at the fact that you sent your son, that we might have a relationship with you. May we not take that for granted, Lord. And I just pray this Christmas season that the people we interact with that they would see Jesus in us, 
so that they might come to a place of knowing you as their Savior. Lead us today, Lord. We adore you, King Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.